a Dread Knight like you've never seen before. <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we have yet another treat for you. I know I always say that because every every day I get to record a video for you guys is uh, is a treat for me, at least, especially these days, right? So, uh, Pop Goes the Monkey sent us over two of his new uh, Dread Knight upgrade kits. There's two separate ones designed by two separate uh, very cool 3D designers out there, and we're going to get into that here in a second, but. Um, these are really cool kits. Like personally, I um, I've been working with uh, both kits here on on the paint desk, and I'm gonna kind of go through a little step by step. He has some instructions, so we're just gonna kind of give you a brief overview and kind of show you what it all looks like. You know, take a look at the detail work and just kind of give you our thoughts on this. And I'll be honest, I wish eight nine years ago, what was it, 2011, when I got my uh, Grey Knight army together. I really wish these kits, these upgrade kits were around back then, but that's the, that's the crazy, you know, way this whole hobby goes. In 2020, we can literally print out our own parts or buy them from somebody else. Three-dimensionally designed and printed now. It's it's a brave new hobby world out there. So over at the new popgoesthemonkey.com web store, you can check out these two kits right here. Uh, you just have to do it. It's actually easy to find. I think it's under... Yeah, it's under vehicle bits right here under Dread, um, one of these, I think it was Dreads Armor. But it, either way, you can do a search for it and you know, it'll come up either way. So these are the two different kits. They're uh, $50.99 uh, plus shipping, of course. And this is printed out through Shapeways, which you probably heard of by now. I imagine uh, that's who uh, Hero Forge and everybody gets their stuff printed through commercially and then shipped out to folks. And they have um, printer facilities in New York and uh, uh, over in uh, Europe as well. So, you know, everything comes in pretty timely for the most part. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the world right now. But, uh, you know, that being said, as far as I know, I, th I think I think everything's still open uh, as, as far as that goes. Now, this first kit here, uh, the Antonius version of it. Now, this was designed uh, by a, a prolific uh, kind of 3D artist out there as well. He does a lot of uh, not model type stuff. And you can see here if you want to check him out. Uh, here's his name and here's his link to his art station store. But right now, Pop Goes the Monkey is the only person that has a, a licensed these prints to to sell um, you know so obviously he shares the money with antonius over there so you know everybody kind of gets a piece of the pie the artist gets paid the retailers get paid shape boys gets their money for making this stuff so it all kind of goes around but if you just want the, the stls to print out yourself and you have a 3d printer and you're comfortable with it you know not everybody's there yet um then you can get the prints directly from antonius over there but you know either way it's still you still have to do all your supports you still have to do all the things Sometimes in a previously busy world, it might just be worth spending the 50 bucks. Now, I'm not gonna say that to you. Maybe you just wanna print them out yourself and that's cool too. Either way, there's a way for everybody to get paid here for their time and effort, which I think is kind of key to the whole 3D design, um, we'll say issue going forward, right? So everybody's doing it the right way here. And I love this because this is a great precedent for how the hobby might go in the near future. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox now. So you've got this kit, which comes with a bunch of different parts and I actually have it here on the table and I'm gonna show you the parts printed out from Shapeways as well. I didn't get the 3D stuff done yet, um, but you know, I just wanted to get this stuff out the door and uh, show this to you because it's a great kit and I think a lot of people right now might be building up Grey Knight armies because we have a lot of time on our hands to be hobbying. So I thought it'd be a good time to show this off. So there's Antonius's version, uh, which I think is great. It's, you know, it's got a lot going on with it with the Iron Halo on the back. The pads are super, super dope. Um, and then the second one is the Arch Battle Knight Carlos. And this is by artist Carlos Rico um, that does a lot of stuff for um, Pop Goes the Monkey as well. He did some of the Eldar stuff that I've seen and a couple other things too. So great, again, great artist. Maybe not as well known uh, out there, but that's what's great about this stuff is everybody getting credit for kind of the stuff they're doing. So here you can kind of see it's, it's a little bit kind of subdued, but it's got a lot going on um, with the pads and everything here. It's got this really dope cape, you know, typical head. And there's actually an extra bit that goes in here with the Inquisition eye and the centerpiece. When I got the kit in, I didn't know that was coming. So I'll show that to you too, because that's the one we actually assembled. Now there's also an instruction guide, which you can see right here. And that basically will tell you what you need to do when it comes to a plastic kit, how to up, actually upgrade it and assemble it and all the parts to that. Now it doesn't quite combine with the, the GW instruction book, so I'm gonna kind of fill the gap here as best I can right now. Uh, show you the parts, we're gonna get it primed up and show you the actual detail for the air quotes finished product before you would actually start hobbying on it, you know, and painting it up to put it in your arm. 
So here's what the upgrade kit is gonna look like when it comes to you. It's gonna come in some bubble wraps and, and different things. It's gonna be, all be protected, don't worry about that. I actually pulled this off to try to size it. Um, it's hard to see the detail on this. Now this is the Antonius version of the kit. You can tell it's got a lot going on, of course. This is from Shapeway, it's printed out in a translucent, so it's kinda hard to see the detail, but trust me, there's detail here for sure. You may also notice some of the white material, white powdery material that's uh, in different areas on these prints. And that's from Shapeways and I actually worried, I wondered about that back in the day before I started 3D printing myself. And all that is is just a resin that was cured on the outside of the print. So in a lot of cases, it really doesn't matter if you think that the buildup's a little chalky, too chalky for your taste, you can just either scrape it off, use a plastic bristle brush and some soap and water, or what I like to do here is I'll just take some high grit sandpaper and just kind of sand it down until it's super, super smooth. Um, not that it isn't super smooth already, but you know, it, it, I feel like if you're gonna spend the money on this kit, you might wanna just give it a little TLC before, before you get um, the kit itself processed. So other than that, this is basically where you're gonna start. So then you grab the instructions from uh, Pop Goes the Monkey site. So from there, uh, you're just gonna, gonna build up the legs just like you would normally. These, these uh, feet actually don't have to get glued down, which is kind of cool. Um, you can leave the plates off if you want to paint these like a steel kind of color and do a dark steel on uh, the actual torso itself. That might be a good idea. You're going to want to snip off these little ends. And again, all this is on the instructions that you can download for free right along with the product right there, which I did. And it took about, you know, get everything prepped about the same time as it would a normal Dread Knight kit. So don't worry about that. So you're going to clip those parts off right across here. You're going to actually shear off uh, the little round uh, piece that goes right there that starts to form the baby carrier. And I busted out my army painter um, bone saw to do that to get it straight across and uh, shear it off nice and nice and flush and not have any issues there. Uh, then on the torso, you're gonna wanna build the torso up as normal. I went ahead and added the uh, stomach plate armor already. And again, I sanded that down right there for that little stomach uh, part. Uh, right across here, you're just gonna wanna go cut that. Well, it looks like I have a Facebook message. You're gonna wanna cut that off right there, um, which just goes across, I think it's, I think it's like that. You're just gonna shear that off as well. And up here, just gonna wanna snip off those corners because the torso is actually, or the torso armor plate is actually gonna go across there nice and easy. Um, and that's pretty much it. You're not gonna have to assemble the uh, pistons that go in here or do any of the extra heraldry pads or anything that goes on the chest normally. So once you get to that point, you can just keep assembling all your all weapon options and things together and kind of figure out your posing. And I'm gonna go ahead and get everything glued down and show you more of the detail once it's all assembled. So here he is, all assembled up in a nice little dynamic pose. And I used a little blue tack for a couple of things here that I'm gonna go back and uh, magnetize. But overall, I think it's a great pose, you know, with a, a gun up here. And of course they can have another gun over here and a close combat weapon, which can be switched out, you know, for the hammer or whatever. So you know, there's no impact to the model equipment or options or anything like that. Um, but it's really hard to see the detail because it's translucent for the most part and of course the lighting and everything like that. So we are gonna go ahead and um, primer this model just so it gives you a better idea of exactly how it'll look and how, exactly how crisp the detail is because it is a little hard to capture on film. <laughs> I wish they had used uh, maybe like a gray uh, resin material or something like that, but no big deal. Uh, we'll go prime that and then come right back and show you the finished uh, result and wrap it up. So we hit it up with a little gray primer and you can see here, it all starts to make sense. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's so there's detail for sure. I mean, you can see the detail in uh, the inquisitional eye in there in the center and the wings and all the studs and everything down here on the plates look pretty fresh. Although I probably, I would have liked to have seen a couple studs like maybe right there because every, every other plate has some studs. I don't know, maybe it's just a slight oversight. And I mean, I'm, it's not a deal breaker for me by any means, but that would have been kind of cool to see. So it all kind of pull it together. Up here, you can see the big bold, you know, cuts into here and you got plenty of room to put a little heraldry right across there. I didn't glue down the head right here because I want to maybe do some more dynamic posing because I actually didn't glue it at the waist yet either. So not 100% on this pose, but I figured I'd just get it together real quick uh, to show you guys everything right there. So, yep. It turns out a lot more detail, a lot easier to see when you put a little bit of a primer on it and I get it all put together. So that is it for this one. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Uh, make sure you check out Pop Goes the Monkey, of course, for these two fresh designs. They've got uh, baby Carlos, the Carlos carrier here, and then uh, the Antonios set of armor over here as well. And you can get both over at Pop Goes the Monkey, all right? Meow. <laughs>